don't think I have too much of a problem being heard in general, I hear. Uh, um, um, so my name is Wade Vincent. I'm the uh, chief data center engineer responsible for building and deploying data centers for us and all of the hyperscalers around, around the world. Um, and so, you know, I want to try to make this a, a, a you're going to learn something from the session here. Um, and I think it's important to start with kind of the background of why this is taking off. Um, and it turns out that accelerated computing with GPUs is actually a better answer for power constrained data centers because it makes better use of the available power that the data centers have. We also find that, you know, it's the same math that says it's also the most energy efficient. And so what you're going to learn today is what we call a, a super pod, a collection of OCP OR V3 racks and a version we're going to talk about MGX in a second. And we've got a lot of this in some reference documentation, but really would love to get the feedback from folks at the data center industry if this makes sense. Um, and then hopefully you've heard and read about how we took the OCP OR V3 rack and made improvements to it uh, with respect to the floating uh, connector on the, on the manifold, uh, with respect to uh, having more room for cabling in it, and better insertion force. So, um, it, again, what's important for driving demand? So many people say, well, that's not for me. I'm not a large language model builder. But when you look at what accelerated computing, computings that combine a GPU and a CPU, it's not just a small speed up. It's not like, hey, the next generation is 3.2 times better. It's 50 times better, 100 times better, 200 times better, times. So that's like a 98% savings when you go to accelerated computing. And it's across multiple workloads. So it's not just the biggest of the training models. It's not just inference. Now we're talking about generative AI, every, generative AI everywhere and reasoning. And that's why it's going to be coming to a data center near you at tremendous scale. So, you know, a bunch of folks have the, the building blocks on it. A lot of people, of course, know the super chip goes into the rack with, with making it look like one big 72 GPU system. And, you know, there's many components inside of it. It's not just a chip. You know, it's, it's the NVLink fabric. It's either Ethernet or InfiniBand. It, it's liquid cooling in the right places. But, you know, folks here at a data center facility is like, yeah, yeah, but wait, but what is it? And, of course, you all saw this at Computex, and clearly, this picture is enough to build any data center in the world, except where's the air, and where's the water, and where's the power? <laughs> yeah, so it was a great image, but it wasn't very much a take-home image for a data center facility. It made a great story, and somebody's like, what is that, a power over Ethernet? You know, what kind of data center is that? Um, wireless power. So, Hopefully, everyone should recognize this as a modular building block in a data center. And I haven't been involved in the modular data centers or, or the DCF that much uh, in this iteration. I've only been in NVIDIA uh, eight, eight months or something like that. But you see a couple CDUs. You see water to some of the racks. Uh, you see air in some of the racks. And so that's what I'm going to spend my time talking about here is how do you deploy that in a data center? And so the first thing is... Again, so much of the performance benefit we're getting is because of the copper, the big copper interconnect that allows all 72 GPUs to, to, to speak as one. And that in the high performance rack is about 130 kilowatts a rack, plus or minus 10%, uh, Mark, that's, that's the number I'm allowed to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and in, but, it, but as such, we made a conscious decision to put coal plates in certain places and not others. So the point is that, yes, you still need air in your data center. Uh, what temperature air? You still have support racks that are around it. And so in this generation, the support racks that are the login nodes, that can be the storage, that are the L1 and the L2 that build out the interconnect that allow it to, to talk to in, InfiniBand or Ethernet, those are about a one-to-one -one ratio. And so those racks today are about 14 kilowatts. And so basically then the net is the average row density is 62 kilowatts a rack. And hopefully anybody involved in the data center here would say, okay, 
I'm not freaked out by that. My data center might be 20 or 30, but we could build a high density zone based on this average rack density. And so what are the key things that are required to go do that? So the first thing is, yes, you could put it in an air-cooled data center. You see a preponderance of sidecars that do liquid to air cooling in it. But we really think the answer is data center of the future need water. But they don't need 18 C water or 22 C water. Our chips run at a T case of 85 and 90 C, which means we only need 45 C water. Most good CDUs have got a 4 C approach. So 41 C is dry, cooler water everywhere in the world. So I don't need evaporative cooling towers and dealing with blowdown and makeup water. Uh, um, I don't have to worry about sizing for compressors at the site, and I can use that power that 25% you know, of the data center power was compressors. Hey, now you can put more uh, uh, IT in the kit. But, you know, there's parts of the servers that like carbon-based life forms, like us, like it a little bit colder, not too cold in here today. And so some percentage of it is going to probably use traditional data center cooling, whether that's a fan wall, an overhead, uh, the Delta Q, where did Phil sit down at? Yeah, yeah, there we go, yeah, yeah, yeah. The technologies exist. Now, some people, and, and if you've been involved in the industry, ASHRAE, A3, A4, you can run it hotter, but the problem is the hotter you make the cold aisle, the hotter you make the hot aisle. And so that doesn't, fan coils don't necessarily like to work at a 60C. And so the point is there's a mix of it right now going on. Oops, sorry, I thought I had another slide here. Um, but the 65C return, right? If you remember nothing from this presentation, you know, servers don't do work. They don't have a shaft. They're just heaters. And so we as an industry, and there's been heat reuse panels, hopefully you folks set in them, we need to take that 65C water and we need to turn it back into energy. Can we capture 10%, 20%, 30%? But A, it's a shame to pay money for cooling when other people are paying money for the heat. So, so really, that's why we're trying to keep the water temperature high. That's the key, one of the key messages to take away is, is that, 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 that on a cooling perspective, you need two water temperatures, but one of them needs to be chillerless, need, can, can be a dry cooler. Now, water is only scarce locally. So if you're in a place that it's okay to do make up water, with a, uh, 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 a cooling tower, adiabatically enhanced free cooling chiller, you know, make, give it some geeky name to it. You can do that, uh, um, but, but in general, you know, think of it as a dry cooling. So I showed some cartoons there, but, th but people are deploying AI factories at various scales in building blocks at quantities of GPUs all the way out to, you know, Elon talking about 100,000 or 300,000, but they're just scalable elements here that have all the same pieces in it. So, so the good news about that is you go, man, what would I do different if someone told me I had to design a 100 megawatt data center? And the answer is it's not a 100 megawatt data center. It's 12 8 megawatt data centers that really don't share anything other than the giant incoming power line. And so again, as a data center facility, hopefully this, you know, this make, making sense for, for all the folks here. So, so then let me take it home to the things you show, you know, on the floor, the OCP open rack, ORV3 rack, is that the power has been going up over time, 30 amp connector, 60 amp connector, now eight of them. So we believe the right answer in the future is you take the eight power shelves, four at the top, four at the bottom, and design your data center as four to make three. And when you do it at four to make three, uh, um, that actually gives you in a redundant fashion, 207 kilowatts into that rack. That's pretty cool for people who've been working on it since the very first Freedom Rack, which was seven kilowatts. So think about that. The Freedom Rack was seven kilowatts. But a lot of people have A and B power. And so because we've got eight rectifiers in there, you could power it four on A and four on B, but your workload might actually be harder than that. So, you, so, 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 you, so in the event that you actually powered it with A and B power, because that was your existing data center power as you built out an AI factory, you might have degraded performance, but our, the software takes care of itself, the AI factory takes care of itself. But the point is that it can go in any data center that we've got today. 
Uh, and so again, here's a, here's a very tactical example, and this is showing it in a long row. Uh, gosh, I heard somebody tell me that they're still doing 208, 120 volts. And I'm like, wow, that's just crazy, right? Most people are using the European voltage, 415, 240. I show a busway, but it doesn't really matter. It can be a row power panel, you know, that's got, that's got the junction boxes, drops the overhead. I, and again, in this slide, I, I, I show the supporting racks at 34 kilowatts. That's more of a saying, what's the worst power it could ever draw? Because there are a pair of 30 amp circuits in that, you know, or a pair of 60 amp circuits. Um, but in general, they don't draw that much. But the point is, as you design a facility, you've got to do the power math that says, that these four to make four or four to make three power buses are up to the subscription rate that we have. And then finally, physical modeling. You know, we love doing the physical modeling. We got our Omniverse digital twins. Uh, um, uh, yeah, and that's, uh, there's Vahita in our hard hat in the data center there. Uh, uh, we you know, gotta, make, gotta make sure everybody gets, gets a visual in here. But it shows the patch panels, it shows the drop boxes. It shows you got to access all the breakers. You want the energy valves for the water overhead. This shows an overhead, happens to be a data center that had 17 feet. You know, could you do it in 15? Could you put the water under the floor? Yes, yes, but you got to model it, right? Because I mean, you're talking about eight power drafts in every rack. And so that is, that's really important. And so, Really, you know, the call to action here, we're gonna have time in the next panel to talk about some of the water pieces of it. Some of the folks are coming up with us here, but know that, you know, there's a little bit of air today. Sometime in the future, there'll be less and less air because again, we gotta save the planet. We gotta get all the heat into water and do as little air cooling as possible. Uh, um, and it's not that different than a traditional data center layout. So don't be afraid as my friend, uh, Bill Clayman, says we need two things to deploy this. We need power and bravery. I love that. Yeah, uh, you know, it, you know it, it's nothing to be afraid of. Uh, um, you just, accelerated computing is here to stay. It's only growing. Now is the time to get involved. Talk to your other facility friends. Talk to the co-location providers. And come tomorrow, is it this room? Somewhere around here, uh, John Norton is gonna show the MGX rack contributions to it. Uh, um, uh, in, in greater detail. And with that, uh, do I wanna bring up the other panelists? And I think the questions will probably flow in that one. Uh, unless there's a quick, uh, a quick one.